Hello children. Today we are going to take up a very important chapter from your textbook Flamingo. The name of the chapter is, as you can see, Indigo by Lewis Fisher. So, the story is based on the interview taken by Lewis Fisher of Mahatma Gandhi. In order to write on him, Fisher had visited him in 1942 at his ashram Sevagram where he was told about the indigo movement started by Gandhiji. The story revolves around the struggle of Gandhi and other prominent leaders in order to safeguard sharecroppers from the atrocities of the landlords. You all know about Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, born and raised in coastal Gujarat, trained in law at London. He moved to South Africa in 1893 and stayed there for 21 years. First, he employed his non-violent resistance in a campaign for civil rights here, that is in South Africa. He returned to India in 1915. He started organizing peasants, farmers and urban laborers to protest against excessive land tax and discrimination. Imprisoned many times for championing the cause of the needy, considered father of the nation and lovingly called Bapu or Mahatma Gandhi. So, Louis Fisher was a Jewish American journalist. He was highly impressed by Gandhi's use of non-violence and spiritualism. His best known works are The God That Failed and Life of Lenin. A Life of Mahatma Gandhi, one of his books, actually became the basis for the award-winning film Gandhi. And I'm sure many of you have seen the movie. So the chapter deals with these things and I'm going to take you through highlighting all these aspects that are there in the chapter. So we'll start with the indigo problem. We'll move on to Shukla's request. Shukla is Rajkumar Shukla. Then Gandhi visits Champaran, his movement in Champaran, civil disobedience triumphed, and then last but not the least, his politics were intertwined with the practical problems, social and cultural upliftment. So the first thing that we take up is the indigo problem that is the crux of the chapter. Let's understand that. As you all have read in your earlier classes, you would know that most of the arable land of Champaran was owned by the Englishmen and worked by Indian tenants. And the chief commercial crop over here was indigo. Tenants compelled by landlords had to grow 15% of their land. They had to grow indigo. And the entire harvest was then surrendered as rent for that piece of land under a contract that they had signed. Now, in the meanwhile, what happened that Germany developed synthetic cheaper indigo and therefore the Indian indigo was not required, which was more expensive. So now the British and the landlords, they acted very smart and they tried to use this situation to their advantage. They asked for a hefty compensation from the poor farmers to be released for, from that contract. So some of them actually they uh, accepted it. They gave a compensation in order to be free from that contract. But very soon, the news of synthetic indigo reached the Indian sharecroppers. And that is when they felt cheated and they became very angry. And now they wanted their money back. It is at this point that Gandhi arrived in Champaran. So we get to know from the story when it starts 
that Rajkumar Shukla, who was a poor, emaciated and illiterate peasant, met Gandhi at the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. He followed him to various places. He went uh, after Gandhi to Kanpur, Ahmedabad. Finally, he met him at Calcutta and from there he took him to Patna. These places, the names are important because if you get the question, Shukla can be described as a resolute man with tenacity of purpose. Do you agree? Yes, you would because this man had firm determination. He followed Gandhi to various places, named the cities, and then finally Gandhi accepted his request and from Calcutta, he went with him to Patna. Gandhi visits Champaran is the next important phase. And now you have to understand that Gandhi decided to go to Muzaffarpur from Patna in order to obtain complete information. So he was not relying on all that Rajkumar Shukla had told him. He wanted to get complete and thorough knowledge of the whole affair. So this actually tells you about Gandhi's character that he was analytical as well as he wanted complete understanding and therefore he went to Muzaffarpur. He met J.B. Kriplani and Professor Malkani who came with a large body of students and on page 48 there's an important line it was an extraordinary thing in those days. Now, why was it an extraordinary thing? The answer is in the next line. Gandhi commented, for a government professor to harbor a man like me in smaller localities, the Indians were afraid to show sympathy to advocates of home rule and Gandhi was one of them. So. To get the support of government's uh, people, officers, was a great thing. And that's why he says it was an extraordinary thing in those days. Children, mark this as important in your uh, textbook because now you'll be getting reference to context, multiple choice questions. So you should know exactly from where this line is coming. Okay. Sharecroppers arrived to see their champion, lawyers also came and briefed Gandhi about the situation. Gandhi chided the lawyers. And again, this is an important line. The real relief for them is to be free from fear. So Gandhi is saying that what's the point of fighting their case because they are so scared of the British. And now he took it upon him. He went ahead to collect facts and therefore he called on the commissioner of Tirhut division. So first he visited him and the commissioner, you will not believe. The commissioner actually, it says in uh, the chapter, proceeded to bully me and advise me forthwith to leave Tirhut. So Gandhi was asked to leave Tirhut. He did not comply. Rather, he proceeded to Motihari. And here what he did, he made uh, one home as his headquarter and he continued his investigations. And then a report came that one of the peasants had been ill-treated in the nearby village. So he decided to meet the peasant. And as he was going to meet him, he was ordered to return and now see what happens. It reads like this on page 50, first line. The messenger drove Gandhi home where he served him with an official notice to quit Champaran immediately. Gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order. So you see, actually speaking, this is the first instance where Gandhi is actually using civil disobedience for the first time in India. Gandhi's movement in Champaran is the next important thing. Now, when Gandhi reached Champaran, 
um, he has been asked to leave the place and when he refused he was served a notice and he was asked to be present in the court so gandhi accepted it he made the necessary arrangements and then he moved towards the court and found that motihari was black with peasants another very important line this might appear to be like a racist comment but actually he is only talking about louis fisher is talking about the huge crowd that had gathered to see who is their champion and in fact this particular thing is an example uh, of the fact that the indians were beginning to actually question the authority of the british so on page 50 it says there spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the court house was the beginning of their liberation from fear of the british and this entire episode is actually um uh, it's it's an eye opener for the british why because they felt powerless they realized that they could not regulate the crowd without the help of gandhi and this was a proof that british authority hitherto dreaded and unquestioned could be challenged by indians the government was indecisive about handling the case gandhi protested against the delay he read a statement pleading guilty and he said come on now you have to pass the judgment please do that but before that gandhi said he was involved in a conflict of duties now this conflict of duties is very important you have to understand that gandhi clarified that he broke the law to render humanitarian and national service he claimed to have no disrespect for law but greater respect for the voice of his conscience so gandhi is trying to justify that yes i have disobeyed the order the legal notice but i think i have done a greater good by listening to the voice of my conscience because i know i am right and you won't believe what happened the magistrate announced that he would pronounce sentence after a 2 hour recess and he asked gandhi to furnish a bail for 120 minutes and what happens gandhi refused you know he was a barrister he knew the intricacies of law and he knew that he was not wrong therefore he said why should i ask for a bail when i know that i am not guilty the magistrate set him at liberty without delivering the judgment he allowed him to be free imagine now prominent lawyers like rajendra prasad bridge kishore babu molana mazharul haq and several other important lawyers came from bihar and now they conferred with gandhi about the action if he was imprisoned so gandhi questioned what about the injustice to the sharecroppers gandhi was more concerned about that and then these lawyers thought amongst themselves they consulted each other and said that gandhi was a total stranger and yet he was prepared to go to prison for the sake of the peasants if they on the other hand being not only residents of the adjoining districts but also those who had taken fee from the peasants they should go back home doing nothing it would be a shameful desertion you have to underline this it would be a shameful desertion on page 51 again it's very important for your reference to context so they went back to gandhi and they told him that they were ready to follow him into jail and what did gandhi say the battle of champaran is won why because now gandhi knew that he had the support of 
the lawyers, the educated people, and now there was nothing to that would stop them. So several days later, Gandhi received a written communication from the magistrate informing him that the case against him had been dropped. So uh, you have to understand that the judge, you know, he did not know on what charges he could try Gandhi. And that is why the judge said that he could not deliver his judgment because of the overwhelming support that Gandhiji had got. Well, you can see that the judgment itself shows that civil disobedience had triumphed for the first time in modern India. This was very important. And now what happens? Gandhi and the lawyers, now they got together and they started conducting inquiry into the problems of the farmers. Thousands of depositions were written, documents were collected, and then Gandhi had four interviews with the Lieutenant Governor. As a result of that, an official commission was appointed, which would inquire into the whole thing. And imagine, the commission consisted of landlords, government officials, and Gandhi as the sole representative of the peasants. Imagine, it was such a lopsided commission, yet Gandhi did not say anything. He sat for the inquiry and the official inquiry, it reads on page 52, assembled a crushing mountain of evidence against the big planters. When they saw this, they agreed in principle to make refunds to the peasants. But how much must we pay? They asked Gandhi. And they actually thought that Gandhi will ask for full payment. But on the contrary, what did Gandhi ask? He asked for only 50%. They were very smart, very shrewd. They offered 25%. Thinking probably that he would not give way, the representative of the planters offered to refund to the extent of 25%. And to his amazement, I'm reading from the textbook. Mr. Gandhi took him at his word, thus breaking the deadlock. So they thought that Gandhi would never accept 25% and this, was go, this would go on and on and there would be a deadlock and this matter will not resolve. But Gandhi accepted it and said, okay, fine. Give the peasants 25% back. And what did Gandhi say? Gandhi explained that the amount of the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. This is very important, children. Understood? This is very important that they, what was important? No, not the money. But the fact that Gandhi was able to teach to the Indians that they had rights and they should only be courageous enough to fight for those rights. That is more important. So Gandhiji not only made the landlords accept their dishonesty, but also made the farmers learn a lesson in defending their rights with courage. That is important. Okay, so moving forward from here, as you can see in the chapter also, page 53, um, second paragraph, within a few years, the British planters abandoned their estates, which reverted to the peasants, indigo sharecropping disappeared. Did Gandhi return back to Sevagram immediately after that? No. 
as you've read earlier in the chapter he was there for a period of 7 months so gandhi it says was never contented with large political or economic solutions he saw the cultural and social backwardness in the champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately and that is why this point is very important that his politics was intertwined with cultural and social upliftment so he worked in three areas education sanitation and health conditions for education he appealed for teachers mahadev desai and narhari parik remember the names mahadev desai and narhari parik two young men who had joined gandhi as his disciple with their wives volunteered to work in the school as educators several more came from bombay pune and other distant parts of the land so gandhi opened first of all six schools in uh, six different villages then he appealed for teachers and many as we discussed many did accept uh, the request as far as sanitation is concerned kasturbai gandhi's wife taught ashram rules she talked about personal cleanliness and community sanitation with the uh, people and as far as health conditions are concerned he got a volunteer uh, doctor and medicines like castor oil quinine and sulfur ointment were prescribed for various problems let's solve some questions as per the cbsc format and this is the latest format let me tell you uh so we have these mcqs why did gandhi vehemently oppose taking help of charles andrews yes was it because he was a clergyman option d he wanted the lawyers to be self reliant he wanted the lawyers to have faith in their own potential rajkumar shukla's efforts resulted in gandhi ji's fight for the farmers cause this showcases that he was now this is from your sample question paper that has been released by the board that he was option c enterprising and persistent what according to mahatma gandhi would be a real solution for peasants of champaran option a to free them from fears because gandhi thought that today i am there to fight uh, one issue tomorrow there will be uh, many more issues so they should be free from the fear of the british who were the two young men who helped gandhi ji to open primary schools yes mahadev desai and narhari parik these are your short answer questions two markers why do you think gandhi considered the champaran episode to be a turning point in his life this is from one of your cbsc papers all india paper two markers they will be in a part of your subjective so yes began as an attempt to alleviate the distress of poor peasants infused courage to question unquestioned british authority and this served as a foundation of the civil disobedience movement why do you think the servants thought gandhi to be another peasant this is also from your cbsc paper shukla was a poor farmer who pestered their master rajendra prasad then gandhi was dressed very simply like a farmer he sat on his haunches and looked very modest and unassuming long answer question for 5 marks 120 150 words how did gandhi ji succeed in getting justice for the indigo share croppers now this is something like a summary of the first part of the chapter where we talk about the indigo problem this is from your sample question paper 2020 so the first point gandhi met the lawyers and concluded that fighting through courts was not going to solve the problems that's why he chided the lawyers he declared that the real relief for them was to be free from fear he met the commissioner of the tirhut division 
he accepted but wrote on it that he would not obey the order remember the notice he was even willing to court arrest for the cause of the peasants and an official commission of inquiry was appointed in which gandhi ji was made the sole representative of the peasants he succeeded in getting 25% of the compensation for the poor sharecroppers and the peasants realized that they had rights and defenders they learned courage that is important yes and then very important question children self reliance indian independence and help to sharecroppers were all bound together this is the last line of the chapter the conclusive line but it is very important because yes if you get this as a five marker you will deal with these three aspects so talk about self reliance and give the examples of charles andrews who wanted to be with gandhi but gandhi opposed it saying it would be wrong to have an englishman on their side yes because he wanted to give the lawyers a lesson in self reliance then indian independence he taught the indians that they had rights which they could defend made them free from the fear of the british by introducing civil disobedience for the first time in india and help to sharecroppers undoubtedly we all uh, gone through the indigo issue how gandhi tackled the whole indigo problem and thereby got justice for the farmers so i hope this chapter is of some help the explanation good luck if you like it share it with your friends Thank you.